All right, good evening, Sri Lanka. Welcome to the show once again. It's a good Friday and blessings to all who are tuned in uh, right now. And I'm really excited and I'm a little nervous, you know, for the first time since I started my show to have this you know, legend as my guest. You know, I'm pretty excited and it's a good evening to start the show. Uh, a lot of positive news coming from uh, uh, from uh, from the government, you know, from the sources that keep us informed and zero uh, infections as at now and that, you know, four or five people discharge. It's great news, uh, great week and ho hopefully I hope this, you know, trend will continue that, you know, people can have a good Easter and a good Sinhalese New Year and that's what all of us we are hoping for and it's been a while that, you know, we have been in this lockdown situation that you know our hope our hope and prayers would be to come out of it and as a nation and uh, to get back into our our daily lives and uh, as i said earlier i'm pretty excited and a little nervous you know to talk to this you know absolute legend uh, cricket and gentleman that i would call and uh, i had the privilege of knowing him from my school days and i think i played a couple of games my first year and perhaps you know that was his last year and then I had, you know, another opportunity uh, playing with him in, in one of the side games, you know, one of the three-day games. And uh, he's a he's a man who had inspired me a lot. And just despite his cricketing abilities, you know, as a as an administrator, a philanthropist, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, ladies and gentlemen, none other than it's Mr. Sida Petmuniam. You know, Sida Taya is on standby, and I'm going to bring him into the stream and uh, good evening Siddhartha. how are you doing good evening charit uh, i'm doing good i'm doing good i'm in digana and i've been here for nearly uh, 26 days i think sorry you know that uh, yeah i missed you you know, you, you were you were i think we, we spoke briefly you know before the show that you know you were in quarantine for almost 26 days right is that right Yes, uh, I came to um, Digana on the 15th of March. My quarantine, official quarantine finished on the 29th. And I'm still here in Digana. Right. You know, how are you coping with, you know, with the lockdown situation? You know, that, uh, you know, before I tell a funny story, you know, you know, how difficult it was for me to get you on the show, this, you know, and how technically savvy you are, you know, just uh, this, what do you call uh, social distancing, I, I, I believe that suits you fine, Siddhartha. Oh, yeah, I'm very comfortable with it. Uh, and it's lovely <laughs> up here because the weather is cooler than Colombo. Yes, it uh, is over here. Yeah. I'm enjoying the solitude. Well, you know, it's a, it's a forced solitude. You know, I think, you know, I was, you know, I was just going through uh, certain messages on Facebook and I saw Sohan from Experiments. You know, you know his son worked for Sri Lanka Cricket. And it was, you know, he's a funny guy, you know, the, I saw what Sohan was saying, that if he, Sohan is listening in, he said, even if the curfew is lifted, I have no intention of getting back to work, you know, I'm quite happy the way I am, no money, no work, you know, just happy to stay, sit back, relax, you know, uh, actually, lots of people in this country going into that mode, you know, that, uh, which is a uh, little frightening, uh, so that I had, so my first question to you for the evening, how would you uh, look at the post, the, this this post Corona syndrome from a cricketing perspective? You know that. Let me put it this way: the the virus is hitting us from all sides. You know, like you know that you know it is completely you know that you know it has overrun entire world. Now you as a opening batsman for Sri Lanka. Now the enemy is firing at you. How would you? Face the enemy right now at this position for the people who are listening out there. What what would be your advice and how would you cope up with this unknown enemy? Well, I'm very, very happy with what the authorities are doing at the moment, Charit, because to me, saving lives is the key. And once we can live, then, you know, the rest will be easy. So I think um, our, our, the authorities, everybody, the forces, the health sector, 
uh, everybody led by the president is doing a great job keeping us very safe at the moment and i feel comfortable with what they are doing because i think uh, i would rather be in the situation we are rather than uh, the situation england or the usa in i prefer the stricter measures now to maybe ease off things a little later i know it's tough there are lots of people who are struggling uh, but in the short term uh, a little bit of pain for a much better may you know even today as you said it's very encouraging to see we haven't so far had a case reported and uh, more people are getting better so uh, you know i'm very happy with how things are and i think we should all be grateful to everybody who's uh, working incredibly hard to keep uh, us safe brilliant you know and uh, that's good that you mentioned that you know that uh, i never had an opportunity to uh, to thank people who are in a frontline workers the medical workers the forces are doing a tremendous job and so far and uh, i think you know uh, i believe to be frank i don't think you know handling 190 people uh, with the facilities we have in sri lanka that it's not a it's not a big challenge as at now but uh, i think where the actual challenge challenges you know the hundreds of people are in quarantine and you know looking after them their welfare and the forces are doing a fantastic job so kudos to everyone who is doing a good job and keeping us safe and um, well the economic repercussions that you know that what we are going to face eventually i mean that's the reality at the end of the day and uh, i know that i and you were concerned as well you know besides you know all what you do you know apart from your cricketing activities and you know other work that you do that you, know, you have a your entrepreneur as well you know you have a business to run how would you just to tell people what would you think that you know that how do they face once this you know scenario is over how can they get back to work okay you know as as i said i've told my employees that the most important thing is to protect your life and once that is done and if you have your basic food with you and you survive the next 3 4 months we can come out of this um charit i think there are some positive we can gain during this period you know uh, i find people are getting closer to their neighbors families relatives children mothers fathers there is more unity in a way enforced on us which is good you know we uh, we've been leading lives where you're just running around from morning till evening not getting a break and i think this is a good time for introspection you know look at ourselves and see what we've been doing all this time in our lives and uh, see how best we can come out of this i i know there will be loads of difficulties when this crisis ends because it's just not us it's the whole world and i console myself by saying uh, you know following that great norm which is everything is impermanent and i believe this too will be impermanent uh, so the key in as far as i'm concerned is i try not to think too far ahead i just try and live in the moment uh, handle what comes my way right now and uh, just be calm so that uh, whatever comes ahead can be uh, handled uh, sensibly and wisely that's the key it's a universal problem as you said you know it's it's like world war 3 what do we do you know but remember we sri lankans have always been resilient at the toughest of times and we have come out smiling and and I'm, i have no doubt we will do the same you know the positives i see i think our agriculture sector can really take a cue from the situation and and maybe start uh, growing more food which can be consumed by us rather than importing everything so things like that will will uh, develop new businesses new business avenues maybe more home delivery systems people will learn to travel less work more from home so you know it's not going to be all bad at the end of it will come out uh, good but the key is to save lives and i think our country is doing really well as far as that is concerned 
Uh, that's great news. You know, I mean, th this is like very relevant to the question I asked you earlier that, you know, as an opening batsman, so that would be your approach, you know, how you face the coronavirus, you know, is, is it, you know, somewhat similar to what you did, you know, firing all those, you know, quick bowlers, you know, coming at you? Is that the same strategy that, you know, you will use, you know, where in real life? Is that what you're saying? Yes. First, make sure you see the shine of the ball <laughs> and then... Think of attack, I guess. I guess. Yeah, but a brilliant answer. You know, that's like, you know, I think, you know, that's what we are doing right now. Lots of people, you know, that we had this uh, discussion, you know, offline and lots of people have asked me and I was a little skeptical, you know, how you want to, uh, to, uh, to face the situation. So I thought it was like, you know, we should have a, like a 50-50 kind of scenario, but you thought otherwise they, uh... so you meant to say that, you know, you don't believe defense is the best uh, sorry, attack is the best mode of defense, no? Or you want to just you know, see the China off? No, you know, I think you have to assess situations as they are before you decide whether you want to attack or defend. And in this situation, I, I think uh, to attack is foolish. That's why I think we are doing the right thing by saving lives first. You know, just imagine if you were having 100 people dying every day, uh, what life would be. We are in a privileged position that we we are hardly losing lives. And, uh, you know, every day we are seeing somebody recover. And to me, that's a huge blessing, you know. Uh, you, we can only imagine what it is in the United States or England. It's, it's just frightening. And uh, I certainly don't want to be in that position. I would rather be in this position, suffer a little bit as far as the economic situation is concerned but in the long run i think we can bounce back much faster so i'm very grateful for where we are at the moment excellent you know great news uh, Siddhartha is always you know it's a pleasure to listen to your wisdom there are so many messages coming in and just uh, just to say hi to everyone who has you know massive interest and uh, people say that agreed support local agricultural system what you said you know that's great you know that's from deepa she was one of my guests on the show she's all the way from uh, malaysia and uh, uh, is there a q and a session yes people you can send us the questions you know if it is a, a valid and logical question i will always you know i'll ask that i to answer it and yes you know we'll we'll ask him about you know his uh his all his you know the cricketing uh Feet, you know whatever that you know the achievements you know like you know as we go along and uh, so this we just started people patience you know like one donkey at a time you know i don't think siddhartha i can answer 100 questions you know in one go you know there's so many people asking so many things you know just you know go little by little and you know there are so many people out there and uh hang on did uh, be aware of the second wave attack of the second new ball with not many dual of antibodies, you know, Sandhura Kapuge, you know, Captain Nalanda, you know, just, uh, I think the people are referring to what's happening in Singapore right now. You know, that's, uh, did you hear about it, Siddhartha? You know, just say, I think there's a resurgence of the virus and, uh, you know, Singapore is little on the back foot. So as we discussed earlier, as you said, you know, there is no, you don't know how this virus is behaving and, you know, you know that you cannot say that you are over it 100 percent, you know, so we have to be careful, you know. Wear your helmets and masks and whatever, take precautions. So as Sanduna rightly said, there can be a second new ball. You will not know. Then you probably will go back to like exactly what you said, you know, see the sign off. I think, you know, until we find a vac the vaccine or uh, some some kind of cure, you know, that's the way to go. I, I believe in... Uh, see that your hair has grown. I think, you know, this... Uh, um, I can see otherwise, you know, usually you are very prim and proper but you know i think you know just uh, being in isolation has allowed you to grow your hair although i tried very very hard and you know, mine doesn't grow so i have given it up although you can't see me <laughs> yeah well 25 days i've been here 26 days so i have not, i haven't had a chance to have a haircut <laughs> i think the first thing you should do that uh, once you get back to colombo hopefully that uh, that you, know, you have a haircut because I know you are you know still you're worried about you know how you looked always despite uh, your your you know even on the field you are always though you are not very conscious about your kit I remember that you know once you are playing a old boys game 
how you walked into the dressing room only with the pair of gloves you know like you know i couldn't believe it this is that petroni <laughs> if you if you may recall it <laughs> it was so funny and you know that you i think you borrowed everything from uh, from the other players you know who were in the dressing room at that time but you always worried about your look so one thing is that you look after yourself it's always a great pleasure and that you know you are that you know you are an icon and that you know people would like to remember you and see you just the way uh, that they have known you in the past but as you rightly said you know it's the life everything changes and do the best what we can do you know that uh, uh, live in the moment you know then you know do the best and make the most of it and um, right so you now we have back you know like you know briefly we spoke about out of cricket for about 15 minutes or so uh, just getting back to sidataya you know just how i remember you you were the first sri lankan uh, test cricketer to record 100 150 and almost got a double 100 at lords and i think it was all in one calendar year and do you consider that as your the peak in your career and you know, that you know i know that you know you had a long you know, what what's your test test your num- test number by the way sir sorry i didn't get that what was your uh, first uh, your test uh, test number 2 number 2 your number 2 uh, who is number 1 by the bandwa here varnapura all right so there's another question that you know how did we give uh, the the first the 11 going back you know i'm just going little away from the, the original question the uh, when the test tags were like the, the the test numbers were given for the for the guys who played in the first test how did they decide how the number 1 2 3 4 is it uh, according to the batting order and how was it done that's the question i uh, want to ask I, i really can't remember but i presume so because i got number 2 i think bandu being the captain and he was the opening batsman with me so he was number 1 and then they may have just taken the batting order and that's how he was given the number 2 i think right great stuff and and then how long did it take from the first test uh the i know it was a time when you looking back say that i know that uh, uh, i believe that you know if we had the opportunities like the present day cricketers uh, to play so many number of games in a calendar year we did not have that opportunity because the certain restrictions we had and you know we didn't we didn't have you know inbound to us for a while and we had to wait till you know that we had an invitation from a, from another team to go overseas and play and uh, when did you get your 100 from the first test you know which test do you re- do you recall you know at what point did you get the first 100 um, it's a long time ago but i think it was um, i think it was um, the let's see the uh, the second test was in india and i was injured for that and then we went to pakistan and it was the second test so it was the fourth test match it was our fourth test match and my third because i finished uh, i i couldn't play the second test in uh, chennai or madras madras then because i was uh, injured and it was the second test in pakistan so that was a long time and and then in, then immediately after that you know that you went on to get 150 right uh yes the well it was 157 i think it was 157 yeah and and then followed with you know uh, was it 192 at lords you know you could have been the first sri lankan to get the double hundred as well but you fell short by eight runs uh, at lords and uh, do you recall that moment I do I guess yes uh, yeah you know people ask me about uh, not getting a double hundred but I always say you got to be happy with what you got and not with what you didn't get so I try to look at the positive side of that and be happy that I got 190 um, and that's my way of looking at things great stuff you know I've been up this is a question that Rex Clementine uh, called me up yesterday he wanted me to ask you there's a story that not many people know after your 192 at lords um, the apparently viv richards who was watching the game and walked into the dressing room and had a few words with you i mean a uh, guy like you know we all know viv richards won't do that you know walk up to you and had a chat with you do you recall that you know whatever you know we said to you you know after your inning 
Yes, you know, that was an amazing moment because uh, we had, I was outside the entrance and we were, I think, waiting for our transport or something like that. And uh, I was just amazed when uh, Viv walked up to me and said, Man, I just came to shake your hand and then say, uh, uh, That was fantastic. And I, I, I must say, that is one of the special moments uh, in my career. And it was so humbling to have a guy like that come and uh, say, Well done. You know, it meant a lot. And Viv was that kind of guy. You know, he, 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 he always wanted to give a helping hand or support guys, cricketers who were considered underdogs. And um, he was a lovely man and uh, always supported underdogs. And we were there as the underdog then. So it was, uh, it was, uh, it was an honor. I must say it was great. No wonder that, you know, he's awarded uh, MBE by the Queen and now he's, you know, Sir Viv Richards, you know, my apologies for referring to him as uh, Viv Richards. He's no longer, he's, you know, he's, he was knighted by the Queen and, you know, all due respect to the man. It's still around. Do you still keep in touch with any of those, um, the former players, you know, like in the form of uh, Sir Viv and you know, all those players? Unfortunately, not Sir Viv. You know, uh, the thing is, once you retire and you go your own ways, you hardly meet these guys. But, you know, the interesting thing about a cricketer's life is, you know, when you meet these guys again, uh, you're always very warm and friendly and you, you, you talk about the good old days and you talk about how it was then. So, yes, but, you know, you don't necessarily keep in touch as such. I do keep in touch with a few guys, but um, not with, for sure, not with. And this is a question I meant to ask you, see that I, uh, you know, that what's your advice to the cricketers? You know, one of the one of the things that they, what I have noticed personally, and uh, your post cricket life, and you know, it's always you know, like when you look back, as you rightly said, you know, meeting your old teammates and or another player from another country, it's always you know brings back lots of memories. But I find that lots of players, especially our Sri Lankan cricketers. Not necessarily the, the, the overseas players. What do you do after your retirement? You know, that, you know, people are so uncertain what to do with life. So as a result, they tend to carry on. Although that, you know, you are not really fit to be in the team. You try to prolong your career because you have no plans. What you do once you retire? How did you, what's your advice to, to cricketers? How you design your post cricketing life? Yes, uh, the, you know the the truth. The truth is, in our time, it was a lot, lot harder for a cricketer because there was no money in the game, and we sure. had to play for the joy, or, or you know, the, the 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 pride of playing for your country. I remember after ten years of international cricket. Um, being in the, the top bracket of players as far as payments were concerned, I remember getting 10,000 rupees for a test match. And yeah. today, uh, a player gets more than that as his daily meal allowance. So, there were lots of cricketers who suffered uh, a lot and, and still suffer because they gave everything they had to the game. But once they retired... Um, they had absolutely nothing and they had to start afresh, look for jobs and struggle. Whereas the cricketers of today, if they are successful, you know, they can, uh, and I'm very glad they, that opportunity is there, they can financially be very, very independent like some of our top cricketers are. And then if they're sensible and invest the money they make through the game, um, they could get by, you know, they could venture into different things. But the sad thing is, in our sport of cricket, you will find uh, now and even in the future, there will be some casualties where they play cricket, they don't quite make the grade, and then they'll need to find something uh, to keep them going for the rest of their lives. The only thing you, I can say is that, you know, you'll need to find some other passion or uh, like which 
you can maybe get into once you retire but it's a tough call you know it's a tough call um i remember i retired early because i was coming to 30 we were having very little test cricket during that period because there was those troubles um and uh, i looked at the calendar and i had two matches left two test matches for a year the following year and i was 30 years of age and i thought look i just need to think about my future i was going to get married and uh, cricket wouldn't have taken me anywhere and you know i, I decided to quit uh, i was lucky enough to be able to make a living for myself after that but there are lots of cricketers who who suffer uh, after they retire so you know you have to um, give it to these cricketers who do their best to try and make it and uh, i i think the effort is worth it you know some guys don't make the th- the top grade but the effort they make is such that if they then focus their mind on something else they would have cultivated enough um enough things in their uh, mental uh, cupboard to to be able to cope with going into something else that's what the game teaches us you know it teaches you discipline it teaches you determination it teaches you uh, dedication to the task and as long as you have those qualities you can uh, address your mind to different things and yet be successful and i i hope most cricketers would end up being successful in something great great stuff <clears throat> uh sirata you don't believe who is watching the show you remember rohan which is which is singer you know played for st joseph's the opening bat says hi to he you the big guy yes yeah Definitely, rohan is my know. gosh he, he he and i opened together i think for sri lanka schools there you go and i rohan if you're listening in you know the big guy to you and you know the greetings from uh, mr vettamuni himself and uh, yeah and i mean he's a great follower of me you know that it is good to have rohan i on the show as well and i have so many and these are see that i these are some of the advantages being on social media i'm not going to preach to you how good it is because i know you are anti social media and i i forgot to tell people the funny story how much persuasion that went in to bring you on the show because you are uh, adamant i'm not going to be on facebook and i thought oh my god you know what am i going to do i have advertised i'm going to have this man on the show and now the man doesn't want to 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 be on the show because on principle that you don't want to be on facebook but uh, i'm so grateful thank you very much you you know you change your mind to you know, spend you know these few minutes with us and which i'm sure that people uh, also appreciate that rohan is back yes he said sid so characteristically soaked in heaps of humanity that marks through character eventually you know that's uh, that's rohan's words you know to you and uh, hang on sidatta i'm i'm losing it now um as his brother sunil is a pilot what are his thoughts on how sla airline staff were treated during the covid 19 especially after they flew down lankans from wuhan putting their lives at risk you only answer if you want to that's from dirk tisara uh, if you remember him sataya he he was a uh, senior uh, journalist he migrated to canada right now dirky doing very well uh, good evening dirky good to have you on the show and uh, there you go and uh, there are so many other messages the um going back to you know, Sita, let me put you at ease you know that the um another question that is coming in which was sent to me earlier who inspired you to play cricket that i who was your you know inspiration you know where it all started okay i will i think it was definitely my father you know I, i was fortunate to have two brothers ahead of me playing cricket in school sunil and mitra and my father was uh, i don't know obsessed with the game of cricket and the technicalities yeah. of it and he felt cricket was uh, a game which built character it was a way of life and he was very keen that we learn the game and we learn to play it the way it should be um, in the spirit of the game and uh, i'm very grateful to him because he he, he did everything for us to uh, learn this game unfortunately i lost him when i was just 17 years of age but in those 17 years i think i learned most of my 
life lessons and i'm very very grateful to him he was actually you may not know charit he built the first indo school in sri lanka and uh, at the health department sports club and he got berti vijay singer to coach us and uh, he was so keen on our cricket you know he was so keen on our cricket it was just uh, amazing so i am eternally grateful to my father but good to know i must tell you a story here by the way bernard vijay tunga says hi to you good to have you bernard you know all your old teammates you know look at this yata you know they all happy to see you and uh, good old jana kelgama <laughs> and his wife you know <laughs> well yeah, i have to ahead. tell you this will be the last occasion they'll see me on facebook because i'm hoping <laughs> to get out of it as fast as i've got into it there you go there you go people so this is you know just like one rare appearance there we have mr miss great mr siddharth vettamuni is going to be on the show so make the most of it jana kevagama and his wife you know if you remember he played for ananda all the way from canada says hi uh, angelo lienage all cricketers uh, prabhat nisanka oh, my god this is never ending siddharth ayya you as i told you earlier you should run for presidency it's, it's unbelievable you know <laughs> I must, I'm I never must, into yeah. politics. Never. You're into never politics. into politics. Okay, people, did you hear that? All those people who asked me, well, if you know, Mr. Vettamuni will go into politics, you heard from the horse's mouth. No, nah, he's not. You know, don't even think about never, it. Never, he's never, never. <laughs> I must tell you a story about your father that you know, perhaps you know, you didn't, you didn't know. The time I think I was captaining under 12, 14, and your youngest brother Nimal was playing for us. and your father happened to we didn't know who who he was you know he he happened to walk into the nets we were we were practicing at uh, good old ananda the behind macwoods you know what we have acquired you know from macwoods those days and we were having a net and mr great another person like you mr lanel mendis who had done so much for us and today i'm in this position probably because of mr mendis always you know that uh, all credit must go to uh, wherever mr mendis is i hope he rest in peace you know whatever uh, your father walked great in guy. and he was I, a great guy did wonders exactly. for our uh, college cricket absolutely and um, uh, your father walked in i was batting and i still remember he asked uh, mr mendis can i have a chat with this lad and that's the way your father spoke like an englishman you know real you know just uh, <laughs> i'm sure that you know you acquired lots of you know traits from him and uh, he came and said what do you think you're doing this is the way you back sun and he changed my technique very subtle adjustments you know that you know not much and which turned my entire career i'm not i'm not saying that i'm a great cricketer you know that you know whatever i did at school level at national level and until the day i retired it is your father who got me to get my elbow up and you know just to play you know that the play the ball under my eyes it was your father you know that uh, i never told you this story perhaps you know Nima no, Nima knows about it. No, Not it's your it. father. He changed. I'm telling you, he changed, you know, it it happened at under 12 level at Ananda and the 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 entire transformation that you know the, everybody started batting Arjuna myself with the technique that little the 15 perhaps half an hour he spent in the nets he changed our lives you know that you know I was going to tell you which I'm so grateful and to your father and you know that he was a class act you know that absolute class actor that you know just like uh, like each and every one of you and just to answer that question uh, dirky i think that's a very sensitive question which i don't want to ask that that uh, what he thinks about in you know, a house sri lankan airline crew is treated i don't know what sunil laya feels about it and i don't know whether you want to say anything about it sorry repeat the question i didn't hear you uh, dirky wanted to know uh, uh, Sunil being a pilot the how the Sri Lankan crew was treated you know once they returned from Wuhan and you know what Siddharth feels about it you know that's I don't know whether you want I don't, I don't well, know I, I, I thought they did a fantastic job and they were treated very well uh, Sunil has retired now he's teaching he he's a simulator pilot trainer uh, in Korea and uh, but he so he's retired but my son is a pilot with sri lankan airlines at the moment oh and brilliant navy, okay so we've got a we got a family of pilots really uh, i i thought they were treated very well when they came back and they were very brave to go there and bring our chaps back 
there you go uh, that's that's where it is and you know uh, you had four brothers in your family right five five boys five boys yes my mother tried hard to get the girl but didn't I, in fact i was told when i was born she had cried um, <laughs> perhaps all the good looks come because you know because of the you know the good looks maybe because of you know auntie wanted you know a girl and that you know you you know you happen to be you know like a complete man with good looks you know it doesn't come all the time you know it's, i suppose you know that's what's okay <laughs> just, <laughs> no no uh, she was desperately wanting a girl and coming out as the fourth I think she would have thought, "Oh gosh, not another one." <laughs> and eight years later, she had another boy. So you know, I think then she gave up. Wow, it's been a. And out of all four brothers, is that your home? Do you rate, with all you all all respect to uh, Vitraya, and whom do you, whom do you consider the the best player in the family? Oh, to me, my eldest brother was uh, an absolute treat to watch. I have to confess, uh, you know, he was fluid. He had style, technique, and uh, and he was a treat to watch. Uh, Mitra was more like me. You know, we we worked harder on our game and uh, uh, needed more work. Whereas my elder brother Sunil was just all flair. Uh, he was very correct don't get me wrong he was very correct he was a super player but uh, you know he looked at batting as a form of entertainment when he went out to bat and of course the times were different you know he didn't play test cricket uh, and maybe his uh, approach may have changed if he played test cricket but in his day you know he was a he was a class act and uh, i always say he was a better player than me Wow, well, great to hear that. You know, um, we haven't. You know, I played with Nimal to tell you, and I probably you know you didn't know that he's the only the only one in your family who bowl leg spin. You know, the amazing talent. You know, the guy was to me that he was like he was my he was my potential match winner. Every time I wanted a wicket, you know, when he played, I I always brought him into the attack. You know, that he always got me a wicket, and he was immense talent. And unfortunately, Nimal didn't go to continue his. cricket then you know he moved on and did ranjan right did he play cricket uh, ranjan yes he played for ranjan yes uh, in my family he was known as uh, jack of all trades master of none <laughs> he was very gifted too eh? and you know talking of nimal uh, nimal used to remind me more of sunil because his physique and sunil's was similar they were nimal was also very talented you know he was a lovely leg spinner but i think he had too much to live up to following three brothers who had played international cricket and i think he would have got fed up of uh, being reminded of that and he then took up uh, motor racing and actually became the national champion in motor racing but he and sunil looked similar when they played even when they batted i shouldn't be saying this because if he gets to know this he'll be reminding me of this very often <laughs> but uh, when i think of his style of batting it was more like sunil's yeah and i remember he became a great you know motorcycle rider and a couple of times i went to see him all the way to 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 katunaika and he's a great rider daredevil i i couldn't believe it was uh, nimal a uh, couple of questions coming in uh, uh, on my phone sirata yeah uh, it's from a journalist in uk as the wisdom cricket almanac has just come out this week please ask him to guess the four other named cricketers of the year 1985 for their exploits in 1984 i believe that you are one of them i was the first i think i was the first wisdom cricket of the year wow what an achievement uh can you recall uh, who are the others you know he has sent me the answers as well oh i'm sure people like uh Aravind, Murali Dharan, Sangha, Mahela. I'm sure they must be there. You know, I I can't remember. I know he's asking the international cricketers. See that there. Sorry, he's asking about the international cricketers. You mean in '85? Uh, he says yes. Uh, yes, in '85. Yeah. Who are the others? I think it was, if I can remember right, Martin Crow was one. You're right. Yes. Was it Larry Gomes? 
You are right. Oh. Oh, well, I'll I help you with the other two. You know, you know, it's called one guy called Jeff Humpage. You know, which I cannot Sorry? recall. Jeff Humpage. Can't remember. Well, and Jack Simmons. You know, you know. Yeah. Uh, so he said Jack Simmons, Larry Gomes, and Martin Crow, and you. And I, you know, what an achievement. Uh, and he also asked the question that. What led to you retiring in 1987 with the prospect of a 98-88 tour to England on the horizon? I think you already explained why, but you can, you know, just if you want to, since he's listening in. Well, one of the main reasons was, well, a few reasons. Uh, at that time, I wasn't quite happy with how we were managed, but that's an old story which I don't want to get into. The main reason was, you know, um, I was left out of internet of uh, one day cricket, and uh, I was thinking, you know, just to play two two games of test two test matches a year, it was just not worth my while hanging around. Um, I had to find another life, and I think the best decision I made was to retire then, because I wouldn't have got into the business I did subsequently. If I hadn't retired, um, I've been in the clothing business for 30 plus years now. And I got into this uh, business simply because of some guys I knew who were involved in cricket in the UK. And then, you know, I was dragged into this. So I think I made the right call, then got married, had two children, did all that. So no regrets. There you go. You know, Dominic is listening in, so you got your answer. And then someone else has asked that Siddharth was never a great hitter of the ball. But what's the mystery about that one six that he, he hit during the 1983 World Cup towards his girlfriend? You know, is that true? And I didn't know about it. You know, just, it's a funny question. You know, I, I I'm happen to ask you. And if you don't want to answer, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it is true. Maybe it wouldn't have been the best thing to do but i did promise my girlfriend my wife now that if she comes to the match that i would hit a six uh, and uh, when she came in i waved my bat and uh, within an hour or two i hit both of them to where she was so <laughs> one might say that was a little irresponsible <laughs> But, uh, but uh, Charit, I have to tell you, you know, people ask me why I was defensive. I, I genuinely think I wasn't that defensive because uh, I always say, you know, there were, I don't know whether you remember, there were two, three years of a contest called the Batsman of the Year, which was really a eight-over bash. Yeah. Uh, it started, I think, in 1979, 1980 and 81. Uh, yeah. Ceylon Tobacco sponsored this, and it was uh, a tournament where the eight best batsmen in the country are uh, pitted against the best bowlers in the country, and you're given eight overs. Yes. And the guy who scores the most amount of runs without getting out uh, wins. Um, yeah. You will be surprised to know that I lost the first year, but I won the next two years in a row. Uh, so, you know, I, I always say I played the game I was asked to play by my captain, you know, as an opener uh, playing international cricket. My skippers used to always say, just hold your end, keep the, uh, keep your wicket and make sure you hold the team together. And that's what I tried to do. And um, I just played the role that I was asked to play, but I don't necessarily think... Um, that was my natural instinctive game because I could attack when I actually wanted to. Great stuff. You know, there's so many other questions coming in. Someone's asking who's the quickest fast bowler you have faced. The quickest fast bowler? You recall? Yeah, I, I think the question is, you know, who is the hardest bowler you have faced? You know, I think in you know, a quick, quick bowler you have faced. You know, that's a difficult question to answer because in the 80s, Charit, there were so many great fast bowlers and on their day, they were as lethal as the next. I can name a few and it's very difficult to uh, 
separate them, you know, starting with guys like Richard Hadley, Imran Khan, Dennis Lilly, um, Ian Botham. Did you face Jeff Thompson who sent your brother to hospital? Jeff Thompson, Jeff Thompson. But, you know, I was lucky I faced Jim, Jeff Thompson uh, towards the latter stage of his career. And right. um, he wasn't that deadly by that time. But my elder brother used to frighten me with stories about how quick he was. And I have <laughs> no doubt he must have been absolutely lethal. So, you know, there was guys like Rodney Hogg who were very mean, McDermott, so many. And the thing about fast bowling is they're like batsmen, you know, on their day, they are, uh, they are better than the others. The West Indians at Ghana, Marshall holding, you know, it was a crazy lot of uh, fast bowlers in that uh, uh, period. So it was incredibly tough going. Yeah, I mean, I always tell people when they, they try to rate that uh, when they ask who's the best batsman you have seen or you know, different, you know, it's an era, different game, different rules, different conditions. So you can't, you know, they were all greats. And so you can't put a finger on it and say this guy was better than the other. They were all greats and, you know, all you know, due respect to them. And the other question is that you had a host of opening batsmen with you, including uh, Ravi Ratnayaka. Whom do you whom do you rate the the best opening partner you had? Yeah, I think that was a problem we had because, you know, when I started, I started with Bandhu, and then uh, there was Susil Fernando, there was my dear friend Amal Silva, there was Ravi. Towards the tail end, they had Roshan. So yes, that was the problem. We 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 never had a, a steady and even Mahesh Gunatilaka. Uh, our brilliant keeper Mahesh, he opened yeah. with me too. So, you know, I had too many people opening with me, I think. And that, that was a problem we were having during that period that there wasn't a settled opening pair. Right. And, you know, uh, Dilki, you know, Danak's wife actually asked, does he recall his most memorable moment on the field? You said off the field, you know, you said talking to Sir Viv Richards and on the field. Uh, it's difficult to pinpoint the most memorable. I'll tell you, one thing that sticks in your mind is your first test win. That was very, very special because we struggled for a couple of years to win that first test match. And uh, to, to say that we won our first test match was just very, very special. But I think in a cricketer's life, you know, you, you have many such moments and it's very difficult to pinpoint one particular moment which is special when you score a few runs you do feel good mm, but i must say winning that test match was special you know because i think we we broke through a barrier which was uh, causing us a little not worry but you know you, you always wait for that first win and after that uh, winning becomes much easier. So I think that was a very, very special moment for us and for me. Yeah, it's true. The winning becomes a habit, you know, once you know, once you know how to win. Yes, that's a moment we will never forget. Ramesh hanging on to that catch going away from him, you know, that's in a, still in our minds, a great win. I remember great Mr. J.R. Jawadana came to the match and declaring the uh, uh, following day a public holiday. I think that was even great. I think people had, you know, much more to drink and it was all very festive kind of thing. It became, it was just like, you know, winning the World Cup, you know, that was, you know, very, very special moment. <clears throat> I know, see that yeah, we have a lot to talk about, you know, you as a cricketer and what you did in the past. I haven't even moved on to your administrative skills, you know, what you did after, uh, after you gave up cricket and, you know, then you, you know, becoming an admin administrator. Um, you were very, your style of management, I believe, is very different to Mr. Abu Fuad, you know, whom we had the pleasure of, you know, I think, spent half of our lives with him. You know, do you have any word from uh, Mr. Abu Fuad? Sorry, do you have any? Any, any uh, word or I recall Mr. Abu Fuad, you know, how he was, he was your manager on, I think, you know, most of your career you know, when you played. How he, how was he as administrator? Yeah, you know, his style was uh, different. He was very 
tough and uh, authoritative, um, didn't necessarily um, go go down well with me. But you know, hats off, he was a fabulous off spinner in his time. Uh, I remember my first international tour was to Bangladesh with him as manager, and uh, I'll never forget he he challenged Ajit De Silva and Kalu Peruma to bowl on a hang bowl onto to a hanky at nets. And yeah. even at that age, uh, he had amazing uh, control of the ball. He was a great uh, off spinner, and um, yes, he was a strict manager and uh, some of us didn't necessarily enjoy his style but you know i guess uh, he had his reasons yeah true and if you know if mrs uh, I, i'm not too sure whether if mrs uh, miss uh, mrs ford is still alive i remember the last few, my last few years at sri lanka cricket we had this function uh, recognizing people who have contributed to the game and one of the nominees I put in was Mr. Fuad, and I remember that you know I had to literally carry him because he lost his sight, the the poor man towards the end of his uh, life. And uh, good old Mr. Fuad, uh, I'm another person who not really didn't get on well with Mr. Fuad, but I, I I hope that you know that towards his end I paid my due respects to him, and uh, wherever he is, good you know good on him. You know he also another person who contributed so much to Sri Lanka cricket. Never forget him. You know, it's a, a brilliant human. And uh, Siddhartha, there's so many questions. That do you? How do you consider 70s, 80s cricket to school cricket to nowadays cricket? I don't know whether you have any idea what's going on now. Uh, do, do you have any idea? Uh, did you say a comparison of the 70s, 80s to the cricket now? Yes. Yes. Uh, school cricket. Uh, yeah. Do you, you see? I think the game has changed in many ways. The main being fielding. Uh, the fielding skills are just at a completely different level. Completely different level. But as far as the bowling and the batting is concerned, I don't think the skills are too different. In fact, I would even go to the extent of saying that in the 70s and 80s, uh, batsmen needed more skill to cope with the the ver variety of wickets they had with uh, uncovered pitchers, rain affected wickets, and no helmets. You needed to be really skillful as a batsman facing good quick bowlers then. So, the main change in the game, I think, is in the fielding. And the fielding has just become something else. You know, it's just sure. fabulous to watch the fielding yeah. uh, that we see today. And the limited over game has obviously brought a lot more improvisation to the game. In the bowling department, especially, there are more uh, variations in bowling skills. The bats have got so much bigger uh, that they seem to be traveling further and further. So sure. I don't think there is really a huge difference in, in that area. But the innovations, the the... the the new thinking in the modern game is certainly different to when we played. And that's a natural process, which is, I guess, fun to watch. Very well said, Siddhartha. You know, just Suresh Murugesa is watching you. And he says, my dad was his manager during the 83 World Cup. You know, that's, uh, Suresh is in another great follower of my show. Says hi to you. If you remember Suresh, he was... Uh, Absolutely, yes. Manager. He was a wonderful manager. He was a wonderful manager. Mr. Muruges, who was a fabulous manager, and we got on famously. Very, very uh, lovable human being he was. There you go, Suresh, if you're listening in. That's you know, brilliant. You know. So we're going back to um, your administrative days. That I, you know, people always think you are a very gentle, um, what can I say, you are a gentleman and uh, you are... A uh, very lovable person, but people haven't seen the other side of you when it comes to decision making. I remember you taking some bold decisions, and by dropping Aravinda Arjuna when you were when you became uh, chief uh, the selection committee chairman. You know what was it like? You know taking such bold decisions. You know where does that toughness come from, Siddhartha? 
I think it has nothing to do with toughness, uh, Sharit. I always believed the key is to do the right thing. And if you do the right thing, you'll get by and invariably you'll have the right results. You know, it's just the norm in anything you do. You do the right thing, you reap the right results. You do the wrong thing and you reap the wrong results. And I firmly believe that we had to make those changes at that time for the sake of the team, for the sake of the future of Sri Lanka cricket. It was nothing personal. Uh, you, you know, guys like Aravind, Arjuna, I like them very much. And, uh, you know, they were my teammates as well. And uh, I made it very, very clear to them that our intention was purely for the welfare of the team and and, and the country. And, and it, that's why things it paid off. So, you know, it was nothing to do with toughness. I've always said, uh, you know, I never try to be tough. You know, it's not tough. It's trying to be correct and doing the right thing. And um, that's all that we did, you know, and that's all I always try to do. Just try and do the right thing and the right results follow. And I, uh, I try to follow that. I follow that as a, as a norm. Well said, Siddharth. I, you know, I think I, I totally agree with you. That's a principle I follow. You know that I always make decisions close to my heart. It's my conscience, and it could be right, it could be wrong. That's my decision, and I stand by it. You know, that's uh, how it has been all along. And Siddharth, I, uh, you remember SP Fernando from Nalanda says hi to you all the way from UK. SP, I think SP played left arm leg spinner. He played after you, SP, and he wants to know, uh, Sid, uh, what do you say? What do you what do you say about Anurana Singh? You know, oh, what a uh, oh, he was a great that, cricketer. Uh, Anura was a great cricketer. You know, he was one of the most gifted players uh, I played with. Uh, you know, from the age of ten, we were competing on opposite camps, and. Uh, you know, I admired him for his sheer talent. He could bowl, bat, field. What a fielder he was. Hit the ball hard. He was not orthodox in his batting, but he had a great eye and, and a fantastic player, you know. It's just that um, after he left school, you know, um, the mind game got to him. And uh, I think that's where he started to slip. But in school, he was phenomenal. He was just an uh, amazing cricketer. There you go. Ravi, I think, you know, we answered that question. Siddhartha has said that he, any day he would rate his uh, elder brother Sunil as a better player. And uh, Ravi De Silva, and I remember CCC, famous CCC wicketkeeper. Uh, we, you know, it's a funny story, Siddhartha, you know, one of the games we got 407, 400 plus. And we put, you know, the literally the Bloomfield team was... Um, like you know, at that time, SSC half the national team came from SSC and uh, and from Bloomfield, and we put Bloomfield under pressure, having put runs on the board. Sunil Jayasinghe came to bat, and Ravi De Silva, the guy who's asking the question, who's the uh, the better player, he missed Sunil Jayasinghe halfway down the wicket, and Sunil got a double hundred, and we lost the game. Thank you, Ravi. I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he says hi to you. Remember, I I remember that. Uh, uh, I hope you remember Ravi very well. You know, he played for CCC and a great guy, Josephian, and he's junior to you, but uh, he played, when he played for CCC, I think, you know, towards your last year. Uh, there's another interesting person, say hi to you and admire your honesty. Remember Karel Toza from Maharaja days? Sorry? Do you remember Karel? Karel yes, Toza? Yes, of course. Of course. I Karel. worked with her in a committee at the ministry as well. Of course, I've known Karel for a long time. Karel says, you know, totally admire your honesty. You know, that's, you know, uh, Karel is another, you know, ardent follow of my show. It's always good to have Karel and uh, guiding me. And, you know, like, you know, she's my biggest critic. Good to have, good to have her on the show. And uh, another person, actually, he's my assistant coach at the moment, Sizataya. He's been asking me to ask you about the constitution, the cricket constitution you had in mind uh, for SLC. Whether do you like to to say something about like the plans you had with uh, the Mahela Sangha and all that? You know that did that did not materialize. 
yeah that's the one sad thing and i hope one day something will materialize you know i i think we just need to change our constitution because if we want to take our cricket forward uh, and compete with the rest of the world we just need to make some changes in our cricket structure and i think sadly till we change our constitution bring in a lot more professionalism independence and transparency we are not going to be able to uh, achieve what we need to achieve uh, and compete with the other countries so i firmly believe that that is a must and till till that happens we will never make genuine progress in our cricket is my honest opinion and you know i'm not pointing fingers at anybody i just think we need to change with the times we need to change to be to compete with the modern game to be at par with other countries our system is just not good enough and uh, sadly i have tried my best for the last maybe 15 years to to get this across and not just me guys like mahela kumar all of us we have tried and so far we have failed uh it is really sad that nobody seems to be interested in that i do hope somebody will do something about it uh, but i am really coming to that stage where i'm tired of uh shouting about this anymore which is very sad to hear sidat i i mean personally the question that i would like to ask if you are called upon to to, to do the right thing you know by sri lanka cricket will you take up the reins or you know would you like to you know you prefer to be in isolated social distancing you know would you like to remain in isolation or you are still keen to come forward and make a contribution you see if it is to support the change of constitution yes i will always come and help uh, but to get involved in interim committees and just run cricket for 6 months i think it's a real waste of time i've been a, i think i'm a interim committee specialist i've been in eight interim committees and every time we've tried to do something nothing has really worked so uh, interim committees is not the solution we need a complete change complete change in our structure in our constitution until that happens i can assure you we will not reach the full potential we have because i have to tell you charit our country is blessed with an amazing number of talented players all over the country our country is full of talented cricketers but we don't have a system to nurture these incredibly talented cricketers who are all over the country not just in colombo you know the majority of our cricketers are now coming from the rural areas but we are missing them we are missing a lot of them because we just don't have a structure and a system to nurture these cricketers and bring them into the forefront of our uh, game so it is really sad you know it's heart wrenching at times for guys like us who played cricket during the difficult period that we see talent we know we can do it but yet we don't do it and uh, there i must say you know the ministry of sport has to has to do something about it and they have fallen short in my opinion isn't that the story you know all all spectrums of life in sri lanka siddhartha at the moment is not only cricket you know you talk to other sports rugby athletics you know that it's all over i mean it's about i hope that after the post covid 19 period that you know we will do something and you know we'll get the country back in order and hatim rajabdin i think siddhartha you are answered your question about sanga mahela though they tried that nothing really worked and uh, suresh thank you very much for your kind sentiments and ruki soisa remember uh, dushan zoza's brother says hi to you ruki is in uk says never forget you getting that 190 at lords ah uh, jeez you know this, this goes on and on siddhartha there's a uh, one other question i don't think you realize the fact that you have been on for almost uh 
one hour, five minutes, you know, you are in the zone. I'm so grateful. Before we wind up, uh, how do you envisage the the post corona scenario for cricket? You know, where are we heading? I don't think we'll have any international tours for a while, Sathaya. And it's I think we'll have to start all over again from scratch. How would you see the scenario? Well, it's difficult to imagine how it will be. I, I think this will take a few months before we can actually maybe start playing international cricket. Uh, honestly, uh, Charit, it's, your guess is as good as mine. We just have to wait and see. As I said, take a day at a time. Uh, enjoy the rest that we've got. Uh, hope that this virus leaves us soon. Uh, as I said, I thank everybody who's involved in protecting us uh, very much for the great job they're doing. And let's hope that uh, we will see the end of this soon. It's very interesting, Sirataya. Do you see a uh, scenario that perhaps I'm saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not hoping that will happen, but... Uh, the players again playing for the passion and the love of the game because there won't be much money coming in for a while because I, I, I believe that all these com the TV companies who are uh, pumping a lot of money into cricket, they won't have much to show. And so we'll have to start somewhere. So all these international players will have to start playing domestic cricket sooner than later. What, what do you reckon? I guess so. You know, a guy who likes to play this game He'll always want to play the game as long as he's fit and uh, youthful. So I, I have no doubt our guys will continue to play. And, you know, as I said before, all these are of the nature to change. Sponsorship, all these things will come back. It's just the timing. So we just got to be patient and hang in there. And I'm sure things will turn around. Great stuff, Sidataya. Uh, before we wind up, I think, you know, we there are so many other questions which I'm going to give up because I have missed uh, uh, so many people asking so many questions and I have only asked what is relevant and what I, I could see on my screen whilst talking to you. And my apologies to the others, you know, if I missed any of your questions, but uh, ever so grateful for being on the show. Uh, please continue to support the show and it's great having you on the show. Uh, before we wind up, Siddhartha, apart from your cricket and your administrative skills, you are a versatile musician, aren't you? You know, there are a couple of clips going around uh, on YouTube and, you know, singing Danno Budunge. And, and I think lots of people don't know the fact, you know, how good you are. You know, you are, you are excellent with the piano, which uh, I have seen. And you're a great singer. You know, where did you pick that up? You know, is it from uh, your father as well or is it any other influence? No, no, you know, in school, we, we, we thoroughly enjoyed doing a lot of music. I remember I played a clarinet for my college band. I strummed a guitar all my life. Uh, wow. And I love singing, yeah. But that's just a hobby, nothing serious. And I don't think, you know, there's this story, I don't know, which I have heard the time I was playing school and probably, you know, that your last year, that uh, you had someone in your family passed away i can't recall who it was and that you had a very special relationship with Dilan vijay singer and how he walked into your home and that he came to play the piano but you did not tell him the bad news the sad news but you allowed him to you know continue with his session you know is that true you know that was a story that circulating around at ananda I have no recollection of that, uh, Charit. I have no recollection. But no, the, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, they were saying, you know, what a great guy you are. But although that there is, you know, there's a funeral in your family that you did not want to disappoint the guy who came into your house to play the piano and you allowed him to play and eventually you broke the news. And, you know, that's like, you know, probably you cannot recall, but that's a story that we all knew. You know, what a great guy you were, you know, the things you did. And uh, Siddhartha, before we uh, end the show, uh, lots of people have asked, what's your advice to lots of young cricketers at the moment who are stuck without playing the game? How do they keep themselves motivated? And what's your message to them? Well, as I said earlier, uh, you know, you've got to cultivate some patience. This thing will pass. 
just work at your game even if you're at home you could you know hit a ball against a wall keep fit keep doing things you know these months will pass by very fast and it will be uh, behind us so you know stay positive stay in the moment and uh, use this time to you know reflect on what you've been doing all this time how you should go forward and um, a little introspection during this period is uh, what i think is best for us to all do well and i'm um, what can i say i i love your optimism and you know that you are always you know that's how you looked at life you know never to give up and i think that's exactly how you played the game and how you took your opposition on and as you rightly said you play each ball to uh, to its own merits and you know see the shine of i think do you reckon that cricket is a way of life you know when you really look back yeah well you know if you play the game in the right spirit um it teaches you things which relate to life you know life is full of ups and downs cricket is full of ups and downs you learn to take the knocks in the right spirit you take the highs also in the right spirit with humility um and when you are down you learn to take them in the right spirit too so in that sense cricket is a great leveler which is a, is what life is you know that that's how i look at it Brilliant, Siddhartha. You know, once again, my sincere gratitude to you to giving this opportunity to have you on the show. And I think all those people uh, who are out there, I, usually when I do my do these shows, I see people popping in and popping out of the show. You know, they they wouldn't wait, continue listening to throughout the show. But it it so happened today. Everyone's like still out there listening to you and. and engaging in the conversation sending very positive messages i think you've been a great you know ambassador for sri lanka cricket you know all along and for everything what you have done that i we appreciate very much and i hope some day that you will get back to sri lanka cricket and share your immense knowledge your experience with all of us and guide us in the future and uh, and and also i wish you well in your future endeavors i hope you get back and open your factory and that uh, that everybody that i know you will look after your your people who work under you you're not a person who will run away from your from your obligations and big hi to your family and to your lovely wife shamini you know she is um, say hi to her and once again thank you very much and hopefully thank you Jerry. Thank, thank you for having me thank you for having me i'm so thank grateful you. sir i'm so grateful that you know you you know you agree to come on the show um think twice before you run away from facebook you know but people i will i will put this clip on youtube for everybody who missed this show that you know people can watch it you too can watch it siddha tai i know that you can't see yourself because you are not watching another 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 monitor or another screen uh, i can see you but you cannot see me but once again thank you very much and for everybody who's out there thank you. uh wish you happy easter you know in few days time and people the country is gearing up at the start of the show we said that you know we good news coming in no infectees today nobody is infected five people discharged so we are as you rightly said siddhartha i think we are on the right path and hopefully that we have more positive news uh, come easter and wish everyone else you know that uh, if i don't have another show which is very unlikely after this uh, come single is new year that everybody you know get back to their families and you know just uh, stay safe do not over indulge or expose yourself the danger is not out of ourselves as that you know what you what you say is that it's still roaming around isn't it it's still we are not out of danger true we need to be patient exactly so those are the parting words people i know the times are hard but hang in there as uh, exactly as mr vettamuni said uh, thank you very much once again sir it's a pleasure and an honor thank to have you. you on the show yeah and thank you sri lanka for the time and the opportunity and hopefully i'll see you once again uh, with another chat 
with uh, hopefully someone who can keep up to Mr. Siddharth Vettamuni for the show that he put up tonight. Ever so grateful. Good night and stay safe and stay at home. Thank you, Siddhartha. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.